Welcome back to River Talk. You know who's been on the show more than you, Deacon? Well, anybody. Well, Larry Biddle. <laughs> he may have he may have the record well, he for is most anybody. appearances on River Talk. Well, and so he man. adds to that list again today. Been a yeah. while, Larry. I know. Too long. Long time. But, you know, I've been in the mountains and Merle's Inlet, so it's not right in Conway. But it's all good. Yeah. Well, good to have you with us. I see you got hey, your Conway f- hat on. Phenomenal. Yeah. You love Conway. Hey, uh, when I came here, it was very different. Uh, they covered it all up with aluminum, they told me, yeah. <laughs> because they wanted it to look modern. Oh, okay. So modern. I, so I tore it all off. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the shareholders and the family went nuts. They yeah. said, what are you doing to our buildings? I said, you don't see what's behind those buildings? And they said, oh. So it went a state award. As soon as we tore the facade off on Main Street. Right. And there's only one awning left just for posterity. It's a good thing. Right. Well, for those that may not know, uh, Larry has, uh, has been a great, great friend of the show. Uh, you, you, you filled in for me many times as a host. You, you were hosting the show uh, before I got here from time to time. But you've got a real special connection with the Jerry Cox Company. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sporting a beard in honor of F.G. Burroughs, okay. who's the founder. That's five generations ago. Wow. And he came here before the Civil War, and he was just passing through. He's from Snow Hill, North Carolina, which, okay. which is uh, one of the companies still existing. It's got timber and whatnot. But anyway, so no one would build the gallows. And he said, well, I'll build the gallows. No problem. So he stayed, and he built the gallows right here. Wow. Um, that and is neat, isn't it? Not, not too many years later, he had 700,000 acres. From here to the Grand Strand, all of that. I mean, it was wow. huge. And that was F.G. Now, his son was, he passed away in 1895. Okay. And his son was F.A., Franklin Augustus. He was Franklin Gorham, and his, his, uh, his son was Franklin Augustus. And Franklin Augustus uh, actually inherited the presidency of the company at that time, Burrs and Collins, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, at uh, age 25. And F.G. Had the, had the vision for Myrtle Beach and all the Grand Strand, uh, but uh, F.A. carried it out. He was the one that created the side wheelers and then the railroad. And, uh, you know, it's, it, Conway is rivers, uh, roads, uh, rail, rails, roads, and runways. And so what I call the four R's. And, and, and so he, he carried it all out. You know, we were in the turpentine business at one time. Which was huge. Yeah, huge, big mm-hmm. time. Big time. Uh, you know, all the, all the folks, that's why the Gullahs are in Conway. The Gullah Nation, some of the Gullahs and Geechees from Georgetown, basically, uh, they came to Conway to work turpentine. And that's why, you know, there's some, there's some Gullah folks right here in this town. Which when you think about people. the expansion of, of the American Navy and, 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 and commerce, yep. and, and all of that wood had to be treated with turpentine. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Huge industry. Oh, it's big. Crazy. It was, it was mm-hmm. huge at the time. There's an old train out there in the woods that you can get on the Waccamaw and see, so it's pretty cool. Wow. Um, and then uh, Jenny's mother, she, she was now, a Burroughs. Jenny is? Jenny's my wife. Right. My wife, okay. Jenny. Her mother, her mother is uh, third generation. She had two brothers, Edward and Henry. Uh, and Jenny's uh, mother, Mar- uh, Virginia, she was the one girl. Uh, of the two boys, and she married Dr. Marshall, who was the first ophthalmologist between Wilmington and Charleston and Florence, right here in Orie County. Okay. And uh, so he was on the board, and when I, Jane and I met in, in, in New York Harbor on my way to Spain, and because uh, I was born in Denver, grew up in Sacramento, and so I ended up, we ended up staying later after I finished my master's and whatnot, and and uh, he, they asked me one time, they said, you know, he's, Dr. Marshall was on the Snow Hill board. He said, I want you to take my place on the Snow Hill board. I said, okay, well, you know, that's fine. So that was fourth, I'm fourth generation. Um, and so that started that. And then since then, I've been on all the boards uh, for many years uh, until they, they kick you off at 65. Okay. But I don't, refi- <laughs> I don't retire, I refire. Yeah. And they don't know what to do with me. Uh, no, neither does anyone else. That's yeah. their problem. Yeah. Uh, you yeah know, but you're Eagles still could, young. You're young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eagles could care less yeah. about turkeys, chickens, and oysters. I mean, that's <laughs> just the way it is. <laughs> that's it. So, uh, 
and then the, now the fifth generation is here. Um, and the Jerry Cox Company, you know, it, 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 uh, it did a lot of things over the years. Um, Burris Company owned the Jerry Cox Company. Right. And, and uh, so, you know, it's been a fuel business and that kind of stuff, and, which was great. Uh, and Jerry Cox was an actual person. We have his picture. Yeah, that's the question that I'm asking. Yeah, he's yeah, Jerry right. Cox, it, it and I couldn't was, answer it. I knew he was a real person. Yeah, he is, and he's he's there, uh, and uh, he's married to some of our uh, some of our shareholders. We bought the company. Uh, I don't know three or four years ago, from uh, from from the uh, from the Burris Company, the family to our family, mm-hmm. uh, the the Biddle family, and so now uh, Casey who is my oldest son, is doing the commercial side. He works with a lot of these housing developments that want gas logs and fireplaces sure. and heat. And, you know, we have uh, Navian uh, stuff. And so that's where that goes. And then, of course, Marshall's, you know, Marshall's here. And, of course, Marshall's like the the treasurer and the he's in the day-to-day stuff and does all the commercial, and not the commercial, but the residential stuff. So, and then you're going to meet Brad. So Brad is another all, all star that joined the family. So yeah, all this week thing. we're going to put the spotlight. Yeah, you know, that's the Jerry exactly Cox right. Company, which is yeah. huge. Um, so it's a hundred year old company, and, and you know, and I'll close with this. I was up in the mountains in our house up there. We have suburban up there in our house up there because Jerry yeah. Cox is not going to go to 350 miles and bring me propane. Right. Yeah. Man, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. So I was talking to the suburban guy, and I said, "He said, what do you do?" I said, "Well, we have a company called Jerry Cox Company." Oh yeah, and. Uh, I said, uh, okay, well, let's, uh, uh, I said, you know, our co- how old is your company? <laughs> and he said, I don't even know. I said, well, our company's 100 years old. I said, where was Suburban 100 years ago? <laughs> yeah. And he said, I don't know. Wow. I said, well, uh, you know, five generations in any business is a sign of power, loyalty, integrity, all the things that it takes Sure. To keep it together, mm-hmm. because most most businesses don't last that long. And I guess we got you know got some great grands. Marshall has two grandchildren, uh, boys. So they're boys. So they're the Biddle boys. And so I guess that's sixth generation on their way. So we'll let them uh, service trucks and fill tanks and do what they're supposed to do. It's a phenomenal story, and there's so much history. Uh, I was out at the office, and Marshall gave me this this logbook with some of the meeting minutes from the early years and you start really putting things together and jerry cox died relatively young he did young man yeah and and you know they just kept his name um on purpose um you know it's history is history you know and you know conway was not called conway it was kingston kingston in the beginning Mm -hmm. thanks to the british and so, you know, they're the ones that named it. They came up the Waccamaw. They didn't stop in Georgetown. They came through the, up the Waccamaw and landed at the foot of the bridge. And, you know, they called it Kingston. Uh, and, and so then we called it uh, later Conway Borough, and then we eventually called it Conway. But it was originally Kingston, which is a great name because it, it was named in honor of the king, King George. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, history's cool here. I call Conway Little Charleston. Yeah. There is so much history here. Yeah, and because we are. We're founded by Charleston. And even the Charlestonians don't know it. I have to share it with them. It's good for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> helps them out. But they have good manners down there. Yeah, they, they're they the do. City. Yeah, yeah right. they're the city with the good manners. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, well, you know, transportation back in those days, of course, uh, by water. And, yeah. of course, they, of course they have, they've got the, the ocean and, and the river Atlas, but we've got a river here. This is, that, right. that was big for this area. Yeah, and we yeah. had the side wheelers, which yeah. were not only for freight, they were for passengers. So mm-hmm. you could actually go to Charleston on a side wheeler, you know, the one on the mural, yeah. which people tried to change the mural. I'm thinking, what? What do you mean you're going to change the mural? Let's put a dolphin on it. I said, no. <laughs> a dolphin? Yeah. yeah. What are you We're not, no, put, dolphins put don't have a lot of history Put an outboard on that here. thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, sorry, stupid stuff. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> Leaving the damn thing alone. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, historic, it's a historic town. Yeah. You know, Myrtle Beach, and I'm not against Myrtle Beach. I love the place. We basically founded it, the family. But. They tear everything down. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, what happened to the ocean forest, wow. ladies and gentlemen? Oh, my gosh. You talk about a mortal sin. I was a Catholic. Now I'm an uh, Anglican. Okay. Just an English Catholic. Well, you'll you know, get yeah. over there with the Baptists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, you guys are all the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we're all the same. We're, we're looking in the same vein. That's right. Uh, and it's always up. 
which is a good thing. Yeah, but you look at the, at the history, and that is a, a sad thing. Uh, it of is. Of all the historical things that are torn down. Boy, that ocean forest was something else, oh, wasn't it? Beautiful. That what was a palace. A, now you saw it. I, I, I never saw. I never saw I, your well, yeah, I saw it. As a matter of fact, I, I, I went. I, I've even got a key to it. Yeah. I made sure I grabbed something before they took that baby down. I was standing next to Jack Thompson when yep, he was taking yep. the pictures when they blew it up, uh, and and it was like God, it just it's just it, it was like it broke your heart. I mean that oh. that place was. I mean between Miami and New York City. It was the place. And it, well, the and thing it was halfway, halfway, halfway right. That's right. And the thing about, you know, the drawing that you did where it's like the red bricks, that throws everybody off. It does throw them off. You did a not- wonderful. Painted have you seen it. this pen and right. ink uh, deal? Of- I, I don't know that I have, but yeah. I'd love to I'm see I'm going to have to get you one. Yeah, I'd love it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But so much history uh, of the beach w- was all right here. I mean, when you think about the 700,000 acres... I mean that's that's visionary because yeah, yeah, yeah. what what do you do with that dirt? Does it grow anything? But maybe a pine tree. Well, you know they tried to grow uh, th- they tried to grow stuff over there. We had a sweet potato business for a while, and the train you know went to where the, the tracks follow where the sweet potato farms were. Okay, which is cool. Uh, that didn't last too long. Right. You know they realized that uh, there was other things, and uh, you know the best way to see the whole the whole history, in my opinion, because we. The family of companies sponsored all this at the foot of the bridge at the chamber. But if you look at the mural in there, it's the entire history of O'Ree County. That, and it's the, it's the economic history. Sure. Because um, we got the regular history up here down the street at the museum, uh, which is the, the Burroughs School. I mean, F.A. Burroughs founded the Burroughs School in 1905. Okay. So uh, that's where that came from. But the family was very big in education. Uh, I don't know how much you think the 25 acres they gave Coastal Carolina University is worth on the front of 501 or not, but it's mm, a, a pretty wow. penny mm-hmm. today. Big time. So the family's been involved in, you know, the development of this entire community, uh, always serving in one way or the other whatever was necessary. And today we're serving uh, Jerry Cox with, you know, heat and cooling and all the things we do racing fuels for oh sure like racing and you know all the and i'm sure brad will tell you this but you know all these people that have these uh, lawn services and whatnot that those two cycle engines you can't use uh, ethanol in those things no that doesn't work you know you got to have 100 percent fuel and uh, so that's a good thing so you know we we've been serving for a long time jerry cox has got a rich history Probably one of the oldest uh, fuel businesses, maybe in the southeast. I don't know. Well, the whole thing is a roll of the dice. You know, looking through those minutes, you, you, you look at some of the lawns uh, where, you know, you you got to get board approval to borrow money, and you're looking at the time frame. And uh, $10,000 lawns was a lot of money you know, during the Depression. Mm-hmm. I mean, these, right. these yes, boys sir. were rolling the dice. Yeah. I mean, you the, the, the Jerry Cox Company was really rolling the dice, and it was so important. It was it was the essential of essential businesses at that time, yeah. especially with that small population back in those days. Prior, I mean, like I say, like he said, Myrtle Beach was formed because of Conway. That's right. We that are was the it. home of Myrtle Beach. Right. Yeah. Well, how that did was the diversification place. come about? Yeah. Sorry, Deacon, That's I interrupted right. you. But the diversification because you could buy a suit of clothes from the Jerry Cox Company once upon a time. Yeah, they had a department store business for many many years. Uh, yeah, and you could get anything in there. I mean, yeah. it was uh, it was like uh, Mass General Store. Mm. Yeah, okay. In North Carolina, yeah, or LL Bean, right? Which had been in Freeport, Maine. Uh, they had everything because they had to. There was nothing else. No one else had anything, and so you know the whole deal. And, and you could get ball peanuts right on the sidewalk. Oh yeah, you know that was strong. <laughs> yeah, that was a big time. Uh, and and Conway was a. It was a very diverse community, still is. It, you know, it kind of had farming, obviously, because of, you know, over here, uh, they couldn't farm much at the beach. But, um, yeah, and then we had some convenience stores. Jerry Cox, we owned two convenience stores, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we sold those. It wasn't, wasn't the most profitable thing. Fuel, fuel business, the, the profit margin in convenience stores is not very strong. No, it's not. It really is. It's isn't. not. And it's too slim of a margin. Uh, so we, we got out of the, we sold those and, uh, you know, we found our niche is, is in fuels. And, uh, so here we are and you'll hear about all the exciting thing that's, that's, that's going forward. 
uh, it's uh, it's great times. So fifth generation is uh, that's incredible. They don't have beards. Uh, <laughs> look at, uh, well, you know, there's Brad. Brad has a has a goatee at least, so he's <laughs> he's kind of part of the part of the family and 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 new. I, it I is. had a goatee, but I went full bit. Full now we're beard. we're completely changing the subject, but the beard has become fashionable now. Oh yeah, yes. I mean that's yeah. a, that's huge business, man. The salons, yeah, you oh, yeah. have that beard. Oh, that's it. That was taboo there for a while. I even have beard oil. Yeah, you got to got to do the whole conditioning. It's great. Yeah, maybe maybe we get some beard oil over there at the Jerry Cox. There you go. Hey. We, we can put whatever you have. I know you talk about all that great stuff you have. We'd be glad to do it. There I'm a go. carnival barker. We'll get you back well, on another show. Well, yes, let's sir. do that because I want to talk more I about I want to see what this is about. What's we'll, we'll, What's talk, we'll do it on the next show. We'll get him back. Yeah, okay. We, we'll we, do that. We'll right, just have you on the next show. Yeah. Out, we'll show you about yeah. that. Oh, so good. you know. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's a good thing. It's about Eagle Ship. He said Eagle Ship. <laughs> S-H-I-P. Yeah. <laughs> Pronounce the P or you're in real trouble. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. Don't want to get in trouble. More right after this.